12 things that makes up a good photograph or 12 things that you need to do to get a good photograph. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. The first one is composition. I think composition is one of the most important things, even though these uh, things are not in order of their importance, they are all important, but I want to start with composition. Composition is a way to make the subject pop out from the rest of the stuff that it's in the photograph. Placing the main subject to a certain place in the frame can boost up your photograph to be a lot lot better than just an average one. What the right way is, that's of course in your artistic choice that what you want to use. You want to use leading lines, you want to use a rule of thirds, maybe golden ratio, symmetry or whatever you want to use. If you want to learn more about composition, I do have a video over there which you can watch after you watch this video. There are a lot of more things about composition. But composition is important because that uh, guides the viewer's eye to the place that you want it to go and also the way your uh, viewers or your photographs view viewer views the photograph. Where does the eye stop? Where is the resting place? And where is the thing that should be seen at first. And there are certain things, not only the composition itself, but also the next topic is in, or the next, not topic, but the next thing is very important in that sense too. It's it's big part of the composition and that is the light. The light is the most important thing in a photograph. Without light, there are no photographs. So that that's for starters. But there are so many things that light makes, or uh, how would I say it? makes the things work in your photograph. It adds to the mood, it brings up the texture, the direction of the light is important because that makes the scene 3D. If you have light and shadow and shadow play or whatever and all that, what you have in, the, in a photograph, which is the essence, because when you're having a really flat image without any shadows or light, it most likely is very, very boring. But of course, there are always exceptions on this and you might want sometimes to have a flat light if that's part of the story. To tell something is really dull or boring, then having no light and shadow is one way of doing it. But most good photographs have an interesting light. There are certain rules how you should uh, use light and the rules doesn't come because someone had made them up. Because, for example, side lighting brings up the texture. Lighting from behind the subject makes the silhouette and light behind the photographer makes the scene really uh, kind of like 2D and dull. And those are the choices. Those are the kind of like the basic choices. Of course, there are some interesting things with light if you have, let's say, both side lighting and back lighting and all that type of stuff. But that's something that we should always, always look. And that's something that when I walk or go outside and, you know, drive somewhere, I always, you know, see the light and, and see, okay, that could have been a good photograph. But if, since I'm on a motorway, I can't stop and take the photograph. But that's also a part of learning that, that you kind of see the light. And that uh, could, could mean also many things. See the light, you know, that could be interpreted in many ways. But always look at the light because that makes the image more interesting if you have some interesting light in the photograph. And then we come to the background. I know, shouldn't there be subject next? Yes, subject is the 12th one at the end and that is something that uh, I will discuss a bit more later because it might not be that important. But before we get into that there are a few more. And let's talk about background. Background is really important if we're telling stories. The but the background cannot be distracting. So usually the best way to, to handle that is to have the subject a bit brighter than the background. So that how we see the subject first, which we might want the viewer to look at first. What's the photograph all about? And then the stuff in the background adds to the story. It gives more things for the viewer to build up the story in his or her head. And that's important. I've always said that I like photographs does not, that does not tell everything. So that's why I usually crop quite tightly and I don't want 
you know, I don't really like to use loose composition where you have everything in the photographs that ends up being kind of nothing. But of course, there are different styles. I'm not saying that the way that I was describing it, that there's nothing the eye to catch is it's a different type of photograph. And, and, and of course, if that is something that you do and you have good explanations and good uh, stories about why you're doing that, then of course, it's totally fine. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I prefer tight crops that does not reveal everything. So there is more room for imagination for the viewer. And that's why I think background should be kind of like um, an add-on to the whole story. Let's say like a portrait and then the background gives some hints about the person in the photograph. There might be some hints that what type of a person he or she is. And I think that's something that you should consider too. So, but always pay attention to the background and see what's there so that there is no competing elements so that the viewer has somewhere to rest his or her eye. And I think that's really important to look at because we concentrate on the subject but don't see what's happening in the background. And a busy background, a wrong background could ruin the whole story and the whole image. That's why I think you should look at the background too. And one important thing before we go to the next one is always look what's around the subject. If it's a person, make sure that there are no distracting elements, you know, on the background that makes all kinds of funny ears or horns or anything like that, that will distract the, the viewer's story so that the story doesn't go to a wrong direction. It's not easy, but with practice, it is something that you should or you will look every time you take a photograph. And then we have the next one, which is perspective. That's something that uh, we also should think about what is the perspective of that we take the photograph? What's the, it could be the height where you take the photograph. Let's say that we mostly photograph from the eye level. And if we are six feet tall or 180 centimeters like I am, then the photographs that I take are mostly from that height. But of course, if you have an articulating screen on your camera, you could photograph low or you can go high. And that makes images interesting to have a different height or perspective when, where you photograph. If you go really low, you can emphasize the size of the subject. And if you go low, you can make it smaller. And that's something that you should consider. So try to look for different angles, very low angles and very high angles. Sometimes getting really high is, is not that easy. Going low with articulating screen is really easy and you should do that more to get more interesting views and different perspective to your photographs. It tells a different story when it's photographed totally low and it might also have some more interesting compositions too that we already talked about. That's also something that you have something in the foreground. You make it more 3D with that way. And then we have color and contrast. Color plays a big role in a photograph because we interpret colors different way. And for example, color red is usually about danger or it could be about love. And sometimes that could be the same thing. It depends. But anyways, that's why, for example, all the signs that uh, the traffic signs that are telling us about the danger usually have red in them. And also color contrast, complementary colors can be something that you can set the mood with. You, you might have bluish tints, which make everything a bit colder, a cooler, and then warm tones makes the image more warm. And then breaking these and combining these can make really interesting images. But of course, sometimes lack of color is the way to do. And there is a video about should you photograph color or black and white and or you shouldn't, but what are the things that you should consider when you're telling stories and taking images or making images? Should you choose black and white or color? And then we have framing and cropping, which is pretty close to making compositions. Framing and cropping is something, okay, you could say that framing is also part of uh, uh, making the composition in a way that you might have some leaves or some trees or some gateways that you photograph through and, and the subject is kind of framed with, with something in the composition or in the environment that you add to the composition. That of course is framing. But framing is also the way you crop the image. And 
what I already said about composition and in other uh, instances that I really like to crop quite tight because I don't want to show everything to the viewer. The viewer has to have some imagination to build up what's around it. And it's up to you and your imagination what you build around. And sometimes it could be different things that I have meant. But uh, my way of photographing is that if I make photographs with stories, I don't want to tell the story to the whole or I don't want you to think about the exact same story that I have. It's your uh, uh, job to interpret the story and make the image uh, something that is for you, from your life experience, you built the story. I'm not the one to tell you how things are. It's up to you to interpret what I have said. If you think the same way, that's totally fine. If you don't, I don't care. It's, uh, it's your interpretation of the image which is more important because that makes uh, your uh, kind of thinking more important. And of course, that is always should be the case. I'm not the one to tell down up from here to down there what you should think. No. And about cropping is, is uh, also looking at the edges of the image so that there are no distracting elements that are breaking the composition. You don't want something to stick from the corner of the image if, if you don't intend to have that in your story or it add, or, or if it's add something to the story then of course it's okay and then it's um, deliberately done. But if you don't want that always look at the edges of the of the frame and see what's going on. And also cropping if there is something that you did not see when while we were making the image cropping afterwards in editing no problem at all. I think it's it's totally fine. And if you want back the the uh, megapixels that you cropped away, then using Topaz Photo AI, for example, is totally fine. And if you're interested in, there is some videos about Topaz AI, which is a marvelous software, by the way. To the next one, timing. And capturing the moment is really important. And of course, it depends on uh, how short the timing is. If we take landscape, the timing is, you know, sunset, sunrise, or certain way the clouds are and the sun is between the clouds and all that. But there is also a timing. The time framing might be an hour or 30 minutes, but sometimes in street photography, the timing could be one second or one fraction of a second. Something happens, you really need to be spot on. And also timing when people are walking and that how do they look. If you want to uh, show speed, then having the person walking like this is better. But if you want to show that they're, you know, going a bit slower and they're old, and then it might be like this. And that's something to consider. And that also needs a precise pressing the shutter. And you want to pre-visualize before you take the image. And you want, but the, the thing is that we already had like uh, seven different things and everything has to happen in, in a fraction of a second to make the good image. So it's not easy. It's uh, we all know these most likely, but it's still not that easy to to make that uh, compos uh, composition, timing, colors. We we there are so many things that we need to consider. And one thing which is actually an extra one that I did not write down is is the pre-visualizing the thing that you you kind of have images in your head that and when that happens, you should be ready to take that photograph. And like I said, always take photographs, even though you don't have a camera. Look around and, and frame images in your mind. That will help your imagination. And, and when you're out photographing, then you already have a ton of images in your head that you want to make. I think that is something that works really well. At least for me, it works well. And then we have emotion and storytelling. We've already talked about a bit about the emotions when we talked about the light, because light is something that makes the emotion. And of course, expressions in people's faces and you can make emotions in with composition. You can you can guide the view or the guide the idea of of a viewer to to a certain direction if you want. And emotions and storytelling are probably the most important things, but those are built with light composition and all that to make the mood look a certain way and also the story to look a certain way. What's included in the photograph and what's left out is the building blocks in that 
part of, of things. This could be a topic of a whole video which I might make and if it if it's already there there then you know you can you can watch it from there if I when I make it it's it's a you know I really need to think about all the different aspects on it. it's not going to be easy but then there is one important thing also and that is the technical skills you should know your camera I've many times I've said that gear is not important but knowing your gear that what's uh, what are you able to do with the existing cameras that you have and what are the the features that you can use in your camera and that adds up to the storytelling and in, in some cases you know the gear is in a way important if you need to do certain things then it might be easier with another camera and then the other camera might not be that good in uh, in that particular thing we could talk about live composite or or using live nd for example just just a few examples from from like olympus cameras or ohm system cameras some other cameras have some other features that you might take advantage of and add to your toolbox as as some features that you could use and know how to use so know your camera and have the understanding of the basics of how a depth of field works and how depth of field what does it actually mean when you have a shallow depth of field and how much depth of field you should have because shooting full open all the time is a kind of lazy way because then you can hide things in the background but having more depth of field makes photography a lot lot harder because you need to consider the background a lot lot more throwing out of focus everything is is, an, is a lazy easy way sometimes it looks really good i'm not saying that you shouldn't use it but it is way too easy stop down to f 5.6 to f8 and start making images you need to look the background a lot lot more and that also uh, kind of like teaches you how to be better how to consider things but of course sometimes like i said shallow depth of field is totally fine it, it's uh, it looks good in many many occasions and then of course post-processing is one thing and that is something that I've uh, talked a lot about in my image editing videos is that it's not about knowing the tools it's about knowing what to do to your photographs and all of the above actually applies to post-processing also how to crop an image afterwards or is it needed how to add some shadows and how to add some light how to make the uh, some parts of the image a bit brighter and usually if you have a bad image you can't make it good with post-processing that's that's not the way so you can't make a shit or make a make a chocolate candy from shit that's not doesn't work but if you already have photographed in a way that post-processing makes the things even better looking and pops the subject pops out the background gets a little darker but that's also something that you should think about when you're photographing how are you going to edit this you, you might take a photograph and then afterwards okay i'm gonna lift that up and especially in in a fast situations where you need to um, take a photograph fast you might not be able to adjust your exposure exactly as that you want but in editing you can uh, you know make the the light brighter and the dark the shadows darker if you want and with with darker shadows you can hide things if you if you realize that oh, i didn't see that because i was concentrating on the subject i didn't see that in the background make it a bit darker so it doesn't grab that much attention if you want and of course vice versa if there's something in the background that you want to lift up just lighten it up a bit and use that and also color contrast and color saturation is something that you should do so uh, everything you do in image editing is actually the same things you do when you're photographing and that's uh, something that you should you should really understand but now then the 12th thing which uh, i said before background is the subject and I see that the subject might not be that important it is more important how you present the subject and how you show the subject and the subject of course can be a more abstract thing it can be a feeling you want to show sadness or you want to show joy in your images it, and there might not be a certain subject for a smiling person or a sad looking person there might be something else there might be different types of light different shadows and you might tell fear with with dark images shadows you might take a you know if, if you're feeling bad you might take some sad images that reflects your feeling and then maybe you having a good time and give showing the joy with colors bright colors and all that 
But of course, sometimes the subject is the thing. If you're photographing a person, of course, the person should be the subject in a way. Of course, the, the uh, way the person looks is the subject, but the, the way or the way the people is, the character, the, the, or everything that could be something that you add with the dramatic light, you might show a dramatic person or with a, with a soft, um, mellow light or mellow light. Never heard of that before, but now, now I have. You could tell a totally different story about a person. And of course, we talked about the background, which might be important to, to the story and to the mood. But if you want to photograph in the streets, it's not, or in the, in the landscapes or portraits or that, the, how you treat the subject is totally different. And I'm not saying that, of course, you treat nature differently than you, you treat a person, even though there is one common thing, treat them nice. But uh, of course, it's it's like a different thing if you're po photographing a person or you're photographing a landscape. You you, you kind of it's a it's a different vibe to to photograph. But you still want, might tell the same type of story, of course, and that's where all these eleven and the twelfth thing comes into consideration. There's quite a lot in this video, and uh, as I said earlier, it is a really hard thing to take all these aspects and all these things into consideration when you're taking the photograph and making the photograph. Because thinking about all these things in a fraction of a second requires skill. So if, if you're learning and practicing, which is good sometimes, just practice on, for example, light, which I find to be the hardest of them all because it, just is the even though we think and we all know how the light is but still that's usually the biggest flaw in images that i look at is that it is the light is not there it's not correct in a way that it doesn't add to the story it doesn't tell the same story as as the image and sometimes the light is just flat that you don't really see the the 3d things but when the light is there then that kind of makes up a lot of other mistakes. So what I would think, or think, yes, suggest is start looking at the light and think if that could be a good photograph. And then with post-processing, you kind of emphasize the story of the light in your image. But I mentioned a few videos and all of those videos are linked in the description of this video. And here is, wait a minute, I always say in the wrong way, light and shadow video is over there if you want to watch more about that. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.